Hello, Shane Young here with Bold Zebras, and today we're going to talk about installing SQL Server 2016. This is part of our series on installing SharePoint, and this is actual video 3B. In video 3A, we talked about installing SQL Server 2014, so this one's just SQL Server 2016. So if you're working down the forks, you know, you've went through videos 1, 2, and 3 about installing your uh, Windows servers, making a domain controller, getting it all joined up. In this series, right, you need to do 3A or 3B. 3A was SQL 2014 Service Pack 1, and so 3B is going to be SQL Server 2016. SharePoint's point of view, it doesn't care which one you pick, so just wanted to give both options available so you knew which one you had. Good? All right, well then let's just jump right in. All right, so here we are back at our three VMs. And so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to log into the SQL Server VM. So hit the Control Alt Delete button. We'll enter our super secret password. You'll notice there's Windows updates that want to be installed. Not a big deal. Um, we're, you know, there's always new updates out. I installed a bunch the first time, and so now we're just ignoring all the other ones going forward because this is just a demo environment. All right, so now we're logged on the SQL Server, and what we're going to do is we're going to wait on Server Manager to pop up. So we can close it really. And so while we wait on that, we'll hit start and we're going to Internet Explorer. All right, we'll expand that out because this is the first time we've logged in. You know, Internet Explorer wants to warn us about all types of things. We're just going to tell it, you know what, use the recommended settings, that's fine. Don't show any of these messages again, that's fine. Uh, we don't need any of uh, Windows 2010 because we're on server 2012 R2. So we're going to jump over to Bing, and what we need to do is we need to uh, install the um, SQL bits, so we need to get those. And so what we're going to do is we're going to download the 180 day trial from the TechNet Evaluation Center. So we're going to search for that in Bing, and yes, I really do use Bing. And now we're going to go down here, we're going to laugh at the fact that I typed in the uh, TechNet Evaluation Center and I missed the link. There it is, right there. And so once the TechNet Evaluation Center opens up, we're going to type in SQL Server 2016. And we'll look right here. There it is at the top. How nice of them. We'll click on that. And so then what it's going to have you do is it's going to have you sign in and download all of the, um, the bits. And then once you do that, we'll be able to uh, jump in. Remember to download the 64-bit uh, version and go ahead and give them any of your uh, you know, information, whether or not you want them to spam you and all that stuff. Once you do that, you're going to want to download those files to the uh, C drive and under install. And so here you can see I've got, uh, I went ahead and did both the, or both the downloads. So this is the uh, single download. So if you download this file, what I can do when I run this one is I'll just run it. We'll say run. And it's going to offer us the opportunity to install the evaluation edition. It's going to say, do you want to do a basic install? Do you want to do a custom install? Or do you want to download the media? And so fortunately, because you know it takes a long time to download the media, I went ahead and done that for us. So I'll close out of this. Yes. And so here I downloaded, you got I got the two files, the uh, enu.exe and the enu.box. Uh, right, this is the launcher, this is all the data. So we're going to double click the enu file. It's going to say, hey, where do you want to extract everything to? That looks like a great place to me. So we'll say OK. And now we'll let it suck everything out of the box. And while it does, we'll go ahead and hit pause. All right, so that took about two and a half minutes. So now that that's done, we'll double click on our folder. And here in our folder, we can see we have a nice little setup. OK, and before we run setup here, we're going to go ahead and close out of our uh, browser window and close out a server manager. Just give us a nice clean environment. So now we'll double click on our friend setup.exe. All right, little use of pause there to avoid you waiting. It took about 30 seconds for it to load. So if yours takes a little bit to load, don't uh, keep beating on setup. Just give it a second or 30 and it'll uh, eventually show up. All right, so now that we're in the SQL Server Installation Center, we're going to hit installation. And we're going to say, hey, we want to do a new SQL Server standalone installation. That's just, That sounds like us. So we'll click on that link. And thanks to pause once again, it popped right open for us. And so here we're going to make sure we want to use a free edition, so evaluation. So we'll hit next. License terms, you need to read all of this fun stuff. I know that's your style. And say I accept. Then we'll hit next. 
It's going to run some checks to make sure everything's up and running. And now it's looking for uh, different updates, anything else that it might need to gather. So just really trying to make sure it's healthy. All right. Then it runs some uh, install rules, and you'll see that the only issue is we have that Windows Firewall is actually on, which is good, right, from a security standpoint. But what you'll see in the SharePoint install videos, we actually will go ahead and put a port uh, 1433. We'll open that up later so SharePoint can talk to the SQL Server. But we'll do that during the SharePoint process, not as part of the SQL process, just so that way it kind of goes in context. All right, so we'll hit Next. Okay, so here we're looking at a whole bunch of different SQL features, and this is one of the places that students in the past have always been very confused. So SharePoint, all it really needs is the database engine, right? The actual SQL Server database engine hosting. All right, so we're going to ignore all these other features that are up and down on the list. We're just going to do the database engine service. So we hit next. All right, and then it's asking us what instance we want to install. We want to do the default instance, so the instance of SQL that runs at just the server name or the slash, if you will. Um, it is possible to install multiple versions of SQL Server on the same box and have them run each independent. So you could have, you know, one running the default instance at the name, kind of that slash spot. And you could have another one running in a slash dev or a slash prod or a slash test or whatever you want to do. And so each instance of SQL Server would be running on this one box, uh, but each would have its own management, its own databases. They'd have their own patch level. It's a pretty neat thing. You even even have older versions of SQL running on the same machine. Um, we don't need to get into any of that, you know, we're not here to deep dive into SQL Server, but just know that it is possible to have multiple instances uh, running on the same box, but you always want to use the default in this scenario. So we're going to say next. Okay, and so here it says, hey, what do you want to run the SQL Server agent as in the SQL Server database engine? It offers you up some local accounts. You don't want to use those. So what we're going to do is we're going to switch over to the AD server right here. We're going to log into that as our domain administrator. We'll put in our secret password again. And then once it opens up here, we're going to go ahead and just hit start. We're going to type in user. And it's going to say Active Directory User and Computers. That's what we want. So we'll say OK. Or not OK. We'll click on the mouse. You saw what I did. Then we're going to drill into Shane's Cows, Users. And there are no SQL accounts right now. So we're going to click on the Create a New User. And we're going to create a user named SQL, last name of service. We're just going to do SQL underscore service for the user's login name. You'll notice in the background that server manager is slowly catching up. Say next. That's why we didn't wait on it. We're going to do uh, make up a password. You guys know me. You know what I'm using. And so user cannot change password. Password never expires. Right? This is a service account password, so I don't want it expiring randomly. Um, you know, depending on your local domain policies, you're going to have different uh, rules about this. But for our little 180-day demo environment, keep the passwords true. So we'll say next, and then we will say finish. Boom! Now we have an account called SQL Service. Looks like I misspelled service, but that's okay. And so then now we'll switch back over to our SQL Server. And so right here for account name, we'll hit this, and then we're going to do our domain, which in, for me is Shane's Cows and then SQL underscore service and then password of pass at word one and then for our friend the SQL database engine same thing Shane's cows SQL underscore service and pass at word one and we're going to leave the SQL server browser because it's disabled and if you need to enable that later on you're going to go ahead and uh, you know maybe set up an account for that and kind of deal with that at that time so for SharePoint right now, we just need to set this up. Um, you'll also notice here there's a collation tab. We're not going to make any changes here, right? But collation is kind of the way the database engine sorts and stores its data. Uh, for SharePoint, the nice thing is when SharePoint creates a database, it sets the collation for that database uh, automatically, so you don't have to worry about it. So leaving the defaults here are not a problem. Okay, so we're going to hit next. All right, what type of authentication mode do you want to use? You want to use Windows Auth mode. Uh, mixed mode allows you to use SQL usernames and passwords. This is where you hear things like an SA account, um, and you also hear about SA account passwords being blank and exploits and things like that. Generally speaking, we leave just Windows authentication mode unless you have a very specific reason otherwise. So we're going to leave that default. You do need to add what user has full rights to the SQL server, and so I'm going to say add the current user, right? Because that's who I've been using for all this fun stuff. 
If we look at the other tabs, data directories. Um, so if you were building an actual production SQL server, you'd want to have all your data kind of on different drives, right? So you'd want to have your databases in one disk, your uh, transaction log files on another, you know, backups to a third, you, know, you might even have separate ones for different ones like that. We're not going to mess with any of that for this install because we just have a C drive, but it is very possible and is something you should look at if you're building a production environment. TempDB, you can control the number and the size of the TempDB. This is some uh, SQL Server tuning stuff, kind of outside the scope of this video as well, but it is a great way on a production server, especially if you have the resources to get a lot more performance because TempDB, the way I always think of it, it's just where SQL likes to write things on its hand, right? It takes little notes, kind of does this little number in TempDB. Um, and so the more of those you've got, the more places you've got to write notes, the faster you can go. All right. And then file stream, this is another one of those uh, features we're not going to do, but this allows you to uh, not store files. So like when you upload a file into the database, right, you install, update a, a Word file. That Word file actually goes and lives inside of a database table by default. Uh, with file stream, you can say, hey, anytime somebody uploads a Word document here, instead of putting it in a table, stream that straight to the hard drive. Um, there's a lot involved. It requires, you know, third-party add-ons be installed and things like that to really do it and do it well. And it changes kind of your backup story, your recovery story. This is way outside the scope of what we're doing here, but it is a feature that, once again, sometimes in large farms, we're talking like, you know, terabytes of data type of farms, maybe hundreds of gigs of data, you start looking at those type of solutions. All right, so we're going to hit next. So. SQL's checked everything out, said, you know what, everything's great, so we're going to go ahead and hit install. All right, and as you can probably guess, I'm going to hit pause while this install runs because you don't want to watch all this paint dry. So I'll see you in a second. Okay, so the install is still running, but I decided that it drives me crazy that, that name is wrong for SQL Server, so I thought I'd fix it real quick and show you how I did it. So I'm going to click back over on my Active Directory server. And I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to single click on single serve, right? So it changes so I can edit it. I'm going to just add the C in here and hit enter. And when I do, it pops up a rename user. And so here it's just like, hey, is this really what you meant? First name, last name, yeah, blah, blah. That's what I meant. So we'll say OK. And just like that, I no longer have to look at the typo for the rest of my life. All right, we'll switch back over to SQL and we'll let the installer keep going. See you in a second. All right, so the SQL install has finished here. Um, it took about 30 minutes, you know, don't worry about me. I watched plenty of YouTube videos, you know, cats doing funny things, dog being adorable, that type of stuff while it was going on. But now that it's all done, um, we're good. So we'll go ahead and click on close. And once we hit on close here, we'll go close out the other windows and we should be all set. Okay, so now the last step we need to go through is we need to install SQL Management Studio. So the easiest way to do that is we're going to hit the start button. We're going to jump down here to our newly installed tools. And we'll see that we've got the uh, SQL Server Installation Center. So I'm going to click on that. Okay, and when it opens, we're going to click on Installation. And then we'll say Install SQL Server Management Tools. This is going to take us in our browser to the location to download the tools. And so here you can see you can download the most recent update with all the baked in July hot fixes, man, we are up to date. That is great news. All right, so you can hit the download here, or click on the link, which will start to download. And now if you have any problems with that not opening, right, you can always hit up here under the little gear and internet options, and then make sure that under security, custom level, that you have enabled downloads, All right? That should be enabled. For me, it already is, so we're good. And then we can hit save. And what you want to do is you want to make sure that you save as, and then I like to put it in the C colon install folder and hit save. Now you'll notice that uh, it's already there because I downloaded it earlier, so you didn't have to wait on that to happen. So I'm going to say no, but you would clearly wouldn't have it already there. All right, so the download will be done. You can close your browser window, close this little guy. And then now you want to navigate over to the C drive, install, and then there's the SSMS, not to be confused with SMS, right? SSMS, setup.enu. We'll double click that. It says, hey, let's install this. Well, the good news is, is you just hit install 
and magic's going to happen. So while the magic is happening, I will hit pause. See you in a second. All right. Now that that portion's done, that took, uh, you know, roughly 20 minutes, actually. It took a little bit of time, but that's okay. My, just my VM being slow, if I had to guess. But now it's done, we'll go ahead and hit uh, close. We'll close out of the install folder, and then we'll hit the start button, and we'll drop down here. We should see our good friend, SQL Server Management Studio. We'll click on that. And now that it's open, you'll see that it's already trying to connect to the local server. That's all good, that's what we want, so we'll hit connect. And then over here on the left, there's our server. You can see that, you can see some default stuff. So that tells us our SQL Server install was good. Yay! So now we can move on to the next video in the series and start installing SharePoint uh, for you. So uh, hopefully you liked the video. Remember to subscribe to the channel and uh, leave any comments that you have either in the comment field or you can hit me up on Twitter at Shane's Cows or you can always reach me through www.boldzebras.com. All right, thanks and see you next time.